And we're live. We're, we're live <laughs> on CKWXZY. I don't know. I just made that up, obviously. That's our radio station. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we're both wearing black today. I'm, yeah, I'm wearing all black. Even my socks are... Oh, no. They're kind of like dark blue, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm moody today. Well, it's kind of gloomy out. It is. It's always dark and gloomy here. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Last week we had a really beautiful weather. <laughs> just being, just being a bit of a downer. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Um, which is fitting for today's uh, topic. We're talking about insecurities. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's. Uh, I have a lot to say about it, about insecurities in general. I guess we could talk about our own insecurities a little bit. But I mean, the, the I think that. The general idea is that everyone has insecurities, and I think that's something that like really affects young adults these days, and like uh, influences our kids actions. These days. Kids these days, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where are the kids these days? Well, I think insecurities. It's kind of um, the reasoning behind a lot of people's behaviors. Like you don't really realize, you think like this person's being rude or you know oh this person's not feeling very good i think a lot of it stems from insecurities yeah and i think maybe we have a bit of a unique um perspective on it as actors because we kind of have to acknowledge our insecurities and use Mm. them when we're when we're working when we're acting and um and it's kind of like well and push past them you can't really have insecurities when you're working, you know. Yeah, well, I think I, I mean, what I meant was like you, you can have insecurities, but you have to, you have to be aware of them, and you have to be acknowledging mm-hmm. them, but you also have to be okay with them, and not at the same time, like especially yeah. if it has to do with your character's emotional core, then. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> acting stuff. <laughs> um, I think in our society. <laughs> How many times do I say that every podcast? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we live in a society. We do. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, but for real. Um, our society, we kind of, like, I don't want to say, like, breed people, but, like, like bring people up to be, like, insecure. Because like, that's how you sell things, right? Like, makeup is literally, it's like, I mean, I know now it's, like, creative and I wear makeup for me. It makes me feel good. But a lot of the time, at least for me, it roots from, crap, I have acne. Oh, are my eyelashes long enough? Oh, my lips aren't, like, you know, well, it's as bright whole, as I want them to be. The whole purpose of makeup is to make yourself look How you better want to look. or better than you do, right? And it's mm-hmm. like, well, that's we should be accepting the way we look and make that a standard rather than... Uh, something that's not natural i guess or not like i mean i think it's totally fine to wear makeup i mean i'm wearing makeup right now but i put on red lipstick to distract from the fact that i have a huge red pimple next to my mouth and then i cut my mouth i don't know how and it's like but you can't tell because i'm wearing nice pretty red lipstick see the distraction (laughs) i i i'm not wearing makeup i i wish i could because i i somehow cut the inside of my nose while shaving this morning (laughs) And then it just looked like my nose was bleeding, but it was just like, I was trying to make sure I got, you know, the little hairs that grow, like, right near the entrance of the nose. But it's, I don't it's have that. Like, yeah. yeah, you're lucky you don't have that. Uh. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, so everyone has insecurities. Mm-hmm. I don't know where I was going with this. Like, literally everyone. Everyone. Every single person on this planet has something that they're insecure about. Yeah. And then, like, men are supposed to pretend... That they don't have insecurities, like they're like not. Everyone, everyone is, but like men are supposed to be like, I'm manly and I'm not afraid of anything, and I'm like. Okay, you know? but what really bugs me is like, magazines and TV shows, like everything. Men are supposed to be like, they're allowed to be rugged looking, you know. Yeah, they're allowed that's true. to age women. It's like, if you see, um, like magazine covers with like George Clooney, they've like made him made his face look like grainy and like. Yeah, it's um, it's in style to age. Like there is a, a there is a style or there's a trend that you can hit as a man when you're aging. 
but which, for women, it's like God forbid you look over thirty. Well, it's getting when better you're like now. 50. But I mean, look at like Jennifer Aniston. She probably pours a lot of money every year into trying to not look any older, and I think she just turned fifty, right? And like everyone's like, "Oh my God, she's fifty! She doesn't look fifty. It's like, well, why can't you just look fifty? Why can't you just look? Well, and what does fifty look like? We're so used to TV shows; they won't hire people who are actually fifty to play fifty. They'll hire someone who's like thirty-eight or forty. Yeah. So then we believe that, oh, they look, they look normal for fifty when they're actually forty. Yeah. So then you start thinking that people are aging badly when really, like, what does fifty look like? What like it's just the amount of years that you've gone around the freaking sun. Yeah, and, and the that's... amount of times you've gone around the sun, like. But then there's the flip side of that with younger people, like for example, I'm I'm calling out CW in particular because they just have a trend of doing this that they hire people who are way older than that actual age to play that age. I mean, Riverdale's a little bit better. They hired people a little bit closer to the age um, not like, really i mean lily reinhardt kj appa oh yeah kj appa i forgot he was like 18 when they yeah or 17 even I but think. they were supposed to be like 15 <laughs> but like i remember when the hundred was casting and i auditioned for it and i was like oh this is so cool this is like these are characters that are my age i was like mm-hmm. 17 or 18 at the time when i was auditioning for it and i was all excited because like here's a chance to get on a show to play my own age i mean i did on mr young but it's a little bit different this is like a realistic show I guess. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, I keep losing my train of thought. Um, but then it's giving these kids who are watching the show, like young young people, teenagers, um, the expectation of, oh, I've got to look older, like women. I've got to be a developed woman at 17 or 18, and some people aren't. Or, or men, for example, I've got to be jacked and like... Six feet tall. Six feet tall, <laughs> and I mean... Well, we can get into our own personal insecurities, and that I will definitely touch on that. You guys have heard me talk about that before. But I, I just don't... I think that's a little bit unhealthy. If you're going to have characters that are truly showing the emotional vulnerability of, a, of someone that age, and how, like, for example, in The 100, people having to go through these adult things when they're not adults, like having to have all these, like, tough responsibilities or trying to survive on their own, or it, or in, in this case, it's kind of like a... Um, lord of the fly situation where it's these young people who are not ready to have like a like a society create their own society or Mm -hmm. forced to do that wow okay (laughs) um but i just feel like that lays all these expectations on people which creates all these insecurities which can create all kinds of other problems yeah i mean that's one way society is contributing to giving people insecurities but the thing is people People, like, care about that until it's somebody that they like that gets cast yeah. in that situation, and yeah. then they don't care anymore. Yeah. So, it's like... Or, or at first, you're angry because you're like, oh, that person's 28, and they're supposed to be playing an 18-year-old, but then you get to know them, and you get to know, you get to see their acting, and you start to like them, and then you get over that. And they're and good, they're... like, they're right for the role. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the thing. And I mean, if you can play younger than you for then, or like older than you, then good for you, right? Yeah, I mean, but... like, like me, I'm 23, and I'm still auditioning. I mean, I had an audition the other day for a 25 year old, which is rare for me. But usually, I audition for 16, 16 to, to to 20 year olds. That's all of my auditions. Yeah, it's like 15 to 18, <laughs> which is totally fine by me. I still feel like a teenager, so <laughs> I, I still don't really feel like mind. A teenager. Like, I, when I was 17, 18, um, I asked someone who was, like, 23, I said, how old do you think I am? And they said, 23. And now that I'm 23, I'm like, I thought that guy was, like, so much older than me. But now I don't really feel that much different than I did when I was, like, 17 or 18. Mm. I, I actually feel sometimes younger because I'm more scared of the world. <laughs> As you get older, you don't get less scared of the world. You get yeah. more insecure and scared of the world absolutely whenever i work on set um and like i talk to people like a lot of the time i'm just like reading or i'm or i'm just like keeping to myself because i'm really scared of like missing something like i do stand in on set and i'm scared that they're gonna like call for me and i'm not gonna hear so i try not to like socialize too much also i have social anxiety so whatever don't at me but um 
like whenever people when I start talking to other stand-ins or like crew members or whatever they're like how old are you because <laughs> they they think I'm like 18 or something when I when I did wonder um one of the moms of like uh one of the kids I think who was in the movie was like where's your mom I was like what because <laughs> she thought I was like 15 yeah which kind of makes me like when I was a teenager that really bugged me because people thought I was like like they think I was like 13 when I was like 16 and that like I guess because of that you know when you're a teenager the whole like you know I want to look older thing that really bugged me yeah and that's like now I don't mind at all I'm like oh I look younger thank you <laughs> yeah well and when you're 13 you're like you're just really want to be older yeah. you really want to be like i'm an adult mom <laughs> yeah or like when you're 13 you really want to be like 17 or 18 you yeah. want to start having those responsibilities you want to be like you want to be done with like um puberty and everything you're insecure about all those changes you're going through mm -hmm. and then at the same time those changes and everything are happening to you super quickly but they feel super slow and then when you become an adult you're like no can i go back like, I'm insecure about my bills. I'm insecure about, like, how much money I'm making. I'm insecure about, like, I still live with my parents. But, like, that's super common. Because usually, whatever you're going through, tons of other people are going through. Oh, absolutely. Well, and there's the shame of, like, like don't spend your money, you know? Like, I get super insecure about my money because, I don't know, like, like Chase Bank just tweeted something like, like, um me why don't i have any money also me spends five dollars on coffee every day right and people were like who are you to shame people about buying coffee for themselves when you pay your ceos like like crazy amounts of money right like it's capitalism i mean that's like again it's like un unachievable expectations which well, no, cause yeah. insecurity on people which sort of cause that unbalanced to be unbalanced for the benefit of the people who are causing the unbalance absolutely i mean that's what i mean like society kind of shames us like they want us to spend money and then they shame it they shame us for it you yeah. know <laughs> yeah i mean that's chase bank isn't just a bank they're also a huge credit card company mm -hmm. they want to make money on interest so they're gonna encourage you to and then they're gonna be like well we wouldn't have to you know if you're Charge worried about you money, then just don't spend money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who could benefit from not buying a coffee every day. Yeah, but the thing is, if you don't like, like, I'm sure, don't buy coffee every single day from mm -hmm. Starbucks or whatever. But like, if you're just working all the time and you barely get any downtime and it's just like life is like friggin' heavy on your shoulders, then doing something nice for yourself feels really good. Or, yeah. like, just makes you feel that little bit better, you know? Otherwise, it's like, what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm being dramatic, but it's like... No, I agree. I think that's one of the ways we can deal with our insecurities is doing little things for ourselves. I mean, like, the thing is, um, right now, I don't have a computer to play video games on. And I really like to, like, I like to have a computer. I like to build computers. I like to work on them. And that was like this goal this year. One of my goals is to build a new computer that's a little bit more like one of something I really want rather mm -hmm. than like settling for something I can afford like and not worry too much about. Like not that I can't afford to buy the one that I want to buy. I, I can. That's why it's a goal this year. But instead of like saving money and getting something you don't really want. Yeah. Or, or sacrificing quality and good experience for just being able to kind of have what you want yeah and that's like the same thing with like this year i also really want to get a vr headset i've been yeah. wanting one for like years now but i also feel extremely guilty because they're not cheap they're expensive and to get a good experience too there you have to spend a lot of money yeah and it's kind of like okay well maybe you know i don't have the same kind of like work that i used to have when i was working with mr young it'd be like well if i want something then i'll just like wait another week and then I can afford it right mm -hmm. or that kind of thing but this this now I work a way less paying kind of job and it's like well I'll have to wait a few weeks or a little bit longer or pick up some extra shifts and uh and then I can be able to afford it yeah <laughs> <laughs>
is a <laughs> materialism. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's what sells. Yeah. Um, and, well, I mean, I don't know where my thought went. I, oh. It left. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like it's kind of a double-edged sword because we spend money on things to help us sort of forget about our insecurities or deal with our insecurities in a way. But at the same time, that opens up more insecurities about money or about worrying that you're too materialistic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. Again, I lost my. We're both really tired, I guess. And we you even ate something this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're always. I, you get that for me, but like I for years would not have breakfast because I just couldn't eat. In the morning, I get too nauseous. I need to eat, otherwise I'm just a mess for the rest of the day. Now I'm fine. I actually, I'm more that way. I need to eat. But then also at the same time, I get insecure because uh, I want to be good looking and uh, everyone says that intermittent fasting is how you get there. But Everybody is different. Just yeah. because somebody does something doesn't mean that's going to work for you. Yeah. Okay, I want to talk about one of my insecurities, okay. which everybody already knows this, but I'm really insecure about my height. I'm only five foot six and like, to be honest, barely five foot six, but there is like a standard on men. Um, and like, I'm really glad that I'm not dating, like that I have a girlfriend that loves me for who I am and my height because like, there's like a standard in the dating world. That's like, you gotta be, I mean, at least on like the, the dating apps, right. Which I never really did, <laughs> but, um, it's like you got to be like at least five foot six or five foot six. I meant six foot, not five foot six. You got to be at least five foot six. Yes, <laughs> I'm down there. But then it's the same thing with like my my livelihood. Uh, my entire life has been about acting, and like the last ten auditions I've gone in, uh, when you start an audition, you have to do something called a slate. And it's basically you say your name and something else about you. Sometimes it's your agency, where you're located, uh, your age. Most of the time it's height, though. Most of the time it's height. I don't know if it's like that for women, but... Yeah, it is. It is? Yeah. yeah. Every audition I go to, name and height, please. Yeah. Hi, I'm Gig, and I'm five foot six. And I went to an audition recently that was uh, um, specifically because they wanted someone under 5'8". And I was kind of like, oh, perfect. <laughs> this is uh i'm actually going for my like my demo like my demographic rather than um trying to stretch to something that i'm not actually whereas i feel like i shouldn't have to be stretching you know what i mean like i i feel like i should have just as much of a chance at a role as somebody else if height is not specified well and i find i mean lately everything's been diversifying right like finally like people of color are getting in i mean it's not anywhere close to being equal but it's it's better yeah and women are getting more roles well i mean not more roles but like better roles yeah <laughs> but the height thing i mean even the age thing is still not great mm -hmm. like if you're over 50 good luck trying to get roles it's ridiculous although this last year i was told that i wasn't getting very many auditions and wasn't being seen very much because most people who are in their late 30s 40s and 50s were the ones being going into auditions because yeah, it was but kind of a if you're over 50 okay you're not you're not gonna yeah be you have to much. already be established yeah like jeff they bridges just or cycle like, through yeah. the same five people <laughs> yeah if they unfortunately that's still a thing and okay. i mean i'm not sure if this is true but i was always insecure after mr young ended because i had been had a little bit of success in vancouver and was like known and I felt like people didn't really want to see me and really want to um, hire me because they're like, okay, well, you just did something. Let's give this other guy who has, doesn't have very much experience or doesn't haven't had it that much of a chance. I don't chance. think that's how it works. I don't You're think right that's how it works. Role, but I'm like, like saying that was like my insecurity. Uh, like I was always insecure that, you know, I, I know it doesn't work that way because there are people who work tons and keep working, right? But I guess I'm insecure. I feel like I'm not worthy of continuing to work hmm. but um i get back to the height thing it's like i i usually go into um auditions and i i realize i'm like the shortest guy in the waiting room hmm. it's becoming a little bit less like that but usually just for like character roles hmm. but that's understandable i mean there's something that sells right like there's a stereotype and it's like that with women too 
um, not about height, but like, you know, well, sometimes with height, being tall, having big boobs, yeah. I'm sure. And, and like, I, I, I feel like that's where you have to go, okay, well, I can't change this about myself, right? Like height. I remember seeing, I have, I know someone who's uh, in a cer- certain fitness community that I used to be uh, involved in, and he's around my height, and he's quite a bit older than me. But a friend of uh, his and of mine too sent him a thing on Facebook that was like, "Here's this experimental surgery to make you taller," and it was literally like cutting your legs and adding a piece, yeah. and it was like really scary. And it's like, here, you need this. It's like, no, that's really extreme and actually kind of like a mean joke, in my opinion, because it's like you can't change that about yourself, not safely. <laughs> I mean, you can get lifts in your shoes, like um, what's his name? Tom Cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think, I can't remember, I think a wardrobe person at some point in my life on set was like, you should wear lifts in your shoes if you're actually worried about your height. And then that was when I realized, I was like, that's totally a normal thing. Oh, yeah. To some people, that's like normal. I mean, there's some people who would be like, you wear lifts in your shoes, what's wrong with you? But I mean, women wear heels. heels. So why do we have to have this double standard? I mean, um, <laughs> I keep losing my thoughts. I don't know what's going on with me. <laughs> What were we saying? We were talking about height and shoes. shoes, lifts and shoes. Oh, it's too late now. Like, you could have done it in your teenhood, you know? You it's like, I had a growth like, spurt. Yeah. <laughs> but now, like, in your early 20s, you can't really yeah. pretend. Well, and also, like, I don't, I'm, I'm really against lying. In my entire life, I've always hated lying. And I, even when it's not a good position to tell the truth, I sometimes just tell the truth anyways. I and know. I, I get myself in trouble. <laughs> And I, or I hurt someone's feelings, and I should have just kept my mouth shut, right? We got a parking ticket. We had a pass. Like, it's for our building. We have a pass. It's, like, our spot. And we forgot to display the pass, and they gave us a ticket. And I said to Gig, just go tell them that the pass fell, because it was broken. Because otherwise we have to pay this ticket. And then he went and he It was, was like, in the car. Yeah, the pass was in the car. Yeah. It just wasn't, like, right front and center, you know? But anyways... And so he goes, and he's like, hey, uh, we forgot to display the pass. I'm like, kick! <laughs> and we didn't end up having to pay it. Yeah. Because we had to call somebody else, and then you lied, right? Um, I can't remember if I lied. Maybe I did, because <laughs> I think I remember feeling really crappy after that phone call. Because um, it was a really expensive ticket. It was like 80, 80 bucks. bucks or something. Yeah. Well, and this is like in our building. In our own building. And it's an assigned pay, spot. We pay for the spot. It's an assigned spot. Like if you if they looked in the files and saw if it's it would same, have our name. If it's the same guy who tickets every single time, he would know that the same car has been parked there for like ever. Oh, well, a and year. he would know the license plate number and the spot <laughs> number. Like I don't anyways, get it. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, back to insecurities. Yeah, sorry. Um I don't mean to pick on your insecurity at all. No, I'm just that's teasing okay. You. Yeah, I know. Um, but that that's that I guess that's my biggest insecurity is the height. Mm. And I get I get kind of bitter about it. And I mean I get bitter about a lot of things and I'm I'm aware of it. But Well, the thing that dates me, like people have their, their preferences mm-hmm. if, if for like dating. Yeah. Um I just think when girls are like I don't date people under six feet and they like won't even talk to them i'm like that's pretty rude like how do you know that's not the love of your life (laughs) well that's i mean then you got to look at it like instead of getting insecure i guess as like from my perspective you got to look at it like well they're missing out they're they are limiting themselves not only from a genetic standpoint right because they don't know whether like just because that guy's short doesn't mean he doesn't have tall genes right (laughs) I may be short, but I have tall genes. I don't. Everyone in my family is short. But, um... Everyone in my family's tall. I don't know. I didn't get it. My mom's, like, 5'8". My dad's, like, 5'10". Your average height for a my woman, My brother's, though. like, 6'8", or something. And I'm 5'4". Oh, 5'5". Five, five, I lie. So. Your average height for a woman, though. I hate it. But that's that's the other thing. We have, these, we have these average... We have these averages... Yeah. And we said earlier, everyone is different. So why do we have to compare ourselves to the a- these averages? I remember but when th- I was a kid, I looked up, like, how tall am I supposed to be? And this was, like, not when I was a kid. I had already reached, like, the height I am now. Yeah. And 
it's like there's an actual formula you like add your parents heights together and then divide it by two or something like that. i can't remember the exact formula and it ended up being exactly my height and i was so angry because i was hoping that i would grow some more what i'm gonna look it up like what mine would be so if my mom was five eight and my dad is five nine no is he five nine i don't know <laughs> it was just a guess okay wait how do i do this so my mom is how do you do this well look up the formula well no you if you to get an average you just add them and then divide by how, how many, many there are yeah but i don't know how to do it because five ten if you put that into a oh i guess i can just i'm stupid okay <sighs> no that doesn't work either Okay, am I dumb? Like, you can't do 5.8 because then 5.10 It's just 5.1. 5.1. And you can't do 58 because then it's 58 plus just 510. Do, just, just do 5.99. <laughs> because it's with height, but you're working on it. Like, because height goes in the imperial. It goes into 12. Um, in the imperial. In the imperial okay, units. Okay, I'm supposed to be 8 foot 7, so... That's not... <laughs> <laughs> not right. You gotta look up the actual formula because it's not it's not an average. It's a it's I don't know how it works. Okay. I'm not a I'm how not a doctor. How tall am I supposed to be? Okay, but the thing is, <laughs> um, when girls are like, I only date people over six feet, and then you call them on it, they're like, well. Men only want girls with big boobs and big butt, and, you know, they have their preferences so I can have mine. It's like, really? You want to stoop down to that level? Yeah. You're basically just saying, well, they're acting shitty, so I can act shitty, too. Yeah. Like, that doesn't make you look like a good person. And also, that's a stereotype. What are we, imperial or metric? We are metric, but we're going by imperial because we're going by inches and feet. Okay, child's age... 17 sure that's as far as it goes oh weird <laughs> okay mother's height five feet eight inches father's height okay calculate this is the most glitchy i'm supposed to be <laughs> i'm supposed to be negative one feet seven inches this whole thing's broken <laughs> Oh god, this is so funny. Okay, okay. Back to the insecurities. Why did it do that? Oh no, I'm supposed to be, I'm female. Hold on. I'm male. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to be zero feet, seven inches. I don't think that thing works. <laughs> Anyways, let's stop. Um... You're supposed to be a fetus. <laughs> <laughs> Un unrealistic expectations. Unrealistic Jeez, we're standards. supposed to be talking about how insecurities friggin' suck, and yet we're like feeding into them right now. Yeah. Don't feed into your insecurities, guys. We... I'm not wearing my glasses, and that thing over there looks like the moon. I don't know what that what thing you're looking at. On the roof over there. Okay, anyways. <laughs> oh. Podcast. I don't have focus right now. No. Focus is at zero. Or maybe five. So what's one of your big insecurities? Uh, my weight. Yeah? I've always been... Like, when I was a teenager, I was like, I'm too fit. <laughs> I'm like, fucking 100 pounds. Sorry, I swore. I'm trying not to. And now I'm like, oh my god, why can't I gain any weight? It, like, bugs me. I've had, like, I have mental breakdowns over it. I mean, not so much anymore. I've, like, I'm a little bit better. But something that, like, really rubs it in and, like, pisses me off is I really want to donate blood. And you can't donate blood if you're under 110 pounds. I find that really strange. I mean, I'm sure it's a safety thing, but they should they should gauge your ability to donate blood off of more than just your weight, mm -hmm. right? They should be like, oh, well, do you have any muscle mass? Do you eat healthy? Are you active? Like all of these other things that you that these other criteria that you meet, you're a healthy individual, right? So I feel like it's like you want to do something good. Right? You want to donate blood, and you go to do it, and you're like, oh, now I'm insecure about my weight again. Mm -hmm. That's... <laughs> it's like little things that trigger it. Like, most of the time, I'm fine. But it's like a couple years ago, I don't know, I wasn't eating very well. I was, like, kind of, I don't know, 
health I was Mental de- health depressed. wasn't a good place, yeah. yeah. It was when we were in Anaheim. And I would just, I would have, like, panic attacks over, like, being too skinny and... Well, I remember you would look in the mirror and you would, you couldn't look away. <laughs> and it's, I'm sure there's, like, everyone's gone through this at some point, right? It's different phases of everyone's mm-hmm. life. But at the same time, it's like, you're, I feel like our insecurities cause us to see things completely different. Yeah. We almost hallucinate because you would see something that I would not see at all. You, you would just see skin and bones. <laughs> and and I, I see a beautiful, <laughs> curvy in all the right ways for me <laughs> woman, right? So I think... I think that, that, like, we need to help lift each other up. We need to help, like, keep each other safe. Yeah. Right? We we all have value. But th- our insecurities make us feel like we don't. And it really bugs me. I notice it. It, triggered, it gets triggered sometimes at work when I'm sitting on those uncomfortable chairs. And I can, like, feel my butt bones, like, digging into the chair. Man. I can, too. Is that just normal for everyone? I'm always normal. like, I've no bum. I remember when I was a kid and I'd sit on my dad's lap. Like, I'd watch TV and I'd sit on his lap. And he'd be like, oh, you got a bony butt. I know, everyone always said that to yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I think. And, and You're then, skinny too, though. Well, yeah. But it's not like we're, we try to be skinny. You know, we try to be healthy. And we try yeah. to be active. But, like, I try and put on muscle. So I, I eat whatever because I'm trying to gain mass. Yeah, I and mean, you, it, you, don't, you don't eat unhealthy, but you don't eat like the way someone would if they're trying to lose weight. No, but it depends on the person. Some people, when they, when they get unhealthy, they start gaining weight. And some people, when they get unhealthy, they start losing weight. I start losing weight when I get unhealthy. It like totally depends on the mm, person. Yeah. Right? Like, and I used to dance a lot, so I had a lot of muscle my whole like childhood and like into teenagehood. And then, like, after a few years of, like, not exercising, I mean, I, like, rode my bike and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then after that, like, I just, I think that's kind of when I f- started freaking out. Because I rode my bike until I was, like, 18, right? Like, yeah. I'd ride my bike a lot. And then I started dating you when I was 18. And, like, two years later, I think, is when we went to Anaheim. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Maybe that's just, like, the right timing of, like, I wasn't keeping, like, good care of myself. I wasn't eating well. I wasn't exercising and I just kind of started losing all my muscles. But I also think it's a it's stress, right? Because I think it's a negative feedback loop. That's like mm-hmm. my personal opinion. These insecurities, they cause other insecurities, which cause other things to go wrong. Like in that time of our lives, we were, we were wanting certain things to happen. They weren't happening, right? Like I was in LA trying to audition. I wasn't getting any auditions. You were in LA with me with nothing to do. We were there for like, like for context, we were there for... Like eight, three months. Eight months or five months. What? No. Anaheim? No? Like three months. Oh, three months. Okay. It <laughs> felt like that long. <laughs> <laughs> or four months. Three yeah. or four. It wasn't like five though. Yeah. And with nothing to do. Like neither of us were working. Neither of us were doing school or anything. Neither of us had really an income. Yeah. So we couldn't just like go and take a trip if we wanted to. And that was when you started making YouTube videos. Yeah. That's why I, when I started making one YouTube video a week because I just had to do something. Yeah. Pardon me. I would, like we we try to do like hikes and stuff, but I mean it was kind of. <clears throat> why am I losing my voice? <clears throat> it was so hot, and I mean the complex we lived in was so nice. Mm-hmm. Had like pools and stuff. <laughs> Barbecues. But... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this place is great. Go move there. And it had gyms too, but yeah. we didn't. We didn't. We weren't really taking care of ourselves. I don't know. Yeah. We were just kind of sitting around and waiting for things to happen, I guess. At the same time, I think that in that age range, like 19, 19 20, I think that's really common. Mm-hmm. I think that's the time of people's lives when they start to learn how to take care of themselves. I guess you were 20 and I was 19. Because <laughs> because that's the time when people are in university. Yeah. Right? That's really common. And I mean, I... I didn't go to school. I didn't. I chose not to do post-secondary education yet. I'm hoping to do it soon. But that's like, if you're doing that, it's totally okay to have a mental breakdown. It's totally okay to like not take care of yourself. But if you're just like living your life, you're supposed to already know how to do it. I feel like. 
Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's an insecurity of mine. Um, how long have we been podcasting? 35 minutes. Oh, wow. That yeah. went by fast. It did go by pretty quickly. <laughs> um, but let's, let's uh, talk a little bit about positives here for a minute. Okay. I think if you're insecure about something, maybe someone's brought something up about you or... Or, um, or you start thinking about yourself in a certain way. I don't think that can be a bad thing. I think you can push yourself to improve yourself. Because I feel like people are always like, you don't have to change yourself for other people. Yeah, that's true. You don't have to change yourself from other people. But it can also make you reflect upon yourself to see qualities about yourself that maybe you would want to change. Mm. To become a better, better person. But right? you don't have to change for other people. But you can change for yourself. Yeah, no, that's my point. Yeah. Right? You don't have to change for other people. But you also, for other people, can change. If you really care about someone, you realize that quality of yourself, even if it's just a tiny little thing, is what I'm saying. Mm. That quality about yourself is not something you really care about having. Or it is something you feel like it's not a big deal to change. You can just do it because it really isn't an inconvenience to yourself to change. And maybe that little part of you will... Like, when I was younger, I need to start thinking this way a little bit more, but when I was younger, I used to be like, I'm going to keep improving and improving and improving and improving on myself my entire life. Because then by the time I'm 80, I'll be the best version of myself, (laughs) you know? So, and that's like when I was 13, I remember like the girl I was dating when I was 13 was all like, oh, I really like uh, um, Jacob from Twilight. He's so hot. And I was like, oh, well, I don't look anything like him. So I started doing push-ups and sit-ups every night. Like 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups every night. And then all my friends, whenever we'd go to the pool or something, they'd be like, dude, you look so good. What do you, I wish I could look like you. And then, and then that became like a pride in myself, right? I, I, out of insecurity, started doing something to change myself. And then that became a big part of my life, fitness. Like mm. I was already a dancer at that point and I was already a very active person. But like, I really got into like changing the way I, I looked aesthetically. I mean, that's like bodybuilding and, and that kind of mm-hmm. thing. But that became a big part of my personality and not in a negative way it was like a meditative kind of thing but at what point is it is it a positive change and like where's the line between a positive change and a negative change well sorry not to like shoot down your well we're supposed to be talking about positives i know i totally agree like i'm just playing devil's advocate yeah but i don't i don't actually don't understand what you're saying at what okay, point is well, it a negative change? Well, a positive change being working out and improving your health, and then a negative change being like vigorexia or like. Yeah, because that's like anything that becomes. Um, so, back to the, if you're doing like so anything you're doing, if it's hurting somebody else or yourself, it's not okay, right? So. It's like addiction. You know you're addicted to something if it's interfering with your everyday life, right? If you're if you're at a point where you uh, have vigorexia, then it would be interfering with your life, right? You would be at the gym eight hours a day, um, exercising all the time, um, and you would be uh, I can't remember what it's called. You'd be risking having it's when you have so much lactic acid in your muscles that you basically are dying. You're getting sick, hmm. um, and that's a, that happens. That happens to some people. That's scary. But I mean, it's rare. You have yeah. literally have to have either not done any exercise in a year and then do a marathon because that's really hard on your body to go from one extreme to the other. Or um, you do like you lift really heavy for mm. every single hour of the day, all day. I mean, I'm sure some people who work in construction or certain manual labor jobs are at risk of that kind of thing. Um, anyways... I think that is what should be the takeaway for for this podcast. Yeah. Um, if you're insecure about something, um, sort of look at it and think, is this, should I change this or should I accept it, right? Yeah. If I can change it, only change it to the point where it's healthy for you and where it is a positive change for yourself. Don't feel like you have to change yourself for other people to accept you mm-hmm. because that can become an addiction in itself having to always change yourself and be accepted by people can kind of turn into a personality disorder. Well, and sometimes it... Why do I keep losing it as soon as I start <laughs> talking? <laughs> um, oh, God, what did you say? I said uh, only do it when it's healthy for yourself to, to that extent. It's gone, whatever. That's okay. 
don't be insecure about forgetting your thoughts. Oh god, that used to be huge for me as a teenager. I'm like a it was even like two years ago. I remember you get so upset when you forget what you were saying. It's like well, because everybody. the thing is, I'd like put up my hand to to say something in school. Mm-hmm. I had to demonstrate putting up my hand. But I don't know why. And uh, and like they'd be like, I'm talking, you know, no questions. Like, and then I'd like, you know, wait until they're done talking. And then I don't remember what my question is. And then, I, like, later at home, I'd be like, oh, crap, that was my question. And now I don't understand how to do the homework or whatever, you know? But you got to see, the, like, let's flip it on its, on its other end. Okay. That's okay. You weren't, you were, um, you were relaxed in a situation where you didn't get so obsessed with the thought. Because for me, I get so obsessive over thoughts and ideas that I cannot let go of something. Mm. I get so frustrated that I can't say something in that moment that I end up interrupting people. That's why I always interrupt people. Because I'm like, I got to say, I got to say my thing right now, mm. right? Because I'm obsessed with it and I don't want to lose it. And also, like, I really need to be heard. I mean, maybe that's being the youngest in my family and always being talked over. Ugh, insecurities. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm tired, too. It's been a long week. Um, I was going to say something. Oh, I noticed. I mean, now, no, it's, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh my God. What was it? Well, I was going to say I noticed that like most of our um insecurities are like physical not like us yeah yeah but i mean but now we've been talking about yeah non-physical the non-physical ones so i matter. just think the most prevalent ones are um physical insecurities and Probably because we see ourselves every single day in the mirror <laughs> that's something else i wanted <laughs> to talk about yeah exactly that's something else i wanted to talk about i wanted to say like why do we have insecurities we i should have talked about this at the beginning but like, why do we have insecurities? Does it have a? Does it serve a like biological purpose, as like a human being, like as an animal? Because you don't see other, other than maybe parrots do the like plucking thing to themselves. We don't know why necessarily they do that. One of the theories is that they're insecure or inbreeding or whatever. But I wonder like why? Because in our in our society, we see ourselves all the time. If we didn't have all this technology, mirrors windows and whatever and we see people if we all were the time. If, yeah if we were like cavemen right or we were in a uh, uh like a tribe would we would we get just as insecure i feel like we would just not as often right i feel like we would we would get insecure but we would also be more aware of our strengths mm. because we would literally have to rely on those strengths day to day to survive and the, I, the only time I could think that you'd be insecure is, like, let's say you wanted to mate with this one person, right? And then they chose somebody else over you. Mm. But, like, back in those scenarios, would it be... Would it cause us to introvert into ourselves and go, oh, I'm, I Probably have no value? Not. I feel like because it would. it would push ourselves, I agree, because it would push ourselves to become better, yeah. right? Like, let's say... Uh, Jeffrey or whoever else in the tribe like uh, got more berries than me right well then the next day I would just try harder to get more berries right whereas I feel like we don't do that enough in society we just go oh man that person's so much better than me and then we just sit and feel crappy about ourselves for a day Yeah. or we let it get in our heads and the next opportunity we have we screw up because we're so focused on it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Anyways, I really did want to talk about that. I was like thinking about that earlier when we decided what this podcast is going to be about. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. It's a, it was a little bit different. We just sort of picked a topic and started talking about it. Yeah, we didn't have anything planned. Usually we plan it out. Yeah. But... And we took last week off because we both weren't feeling well. And it was Mother's Day. It was Mother's Day as well. So... Um, we spent time with your mother. My mother is in the other country. There's only one other country in the world. She's in it. No, <laughs> no, my mom's uh, doing travel nursing right now, so she's far away. Um, but I sent her an e card. Don't worry, I'm a good son. <laughs> I'm insecure. Should I get on with it? Yeah. So I'm here's our. I'm losing my steam. Yeah. Um, our. If you've watched the podcast, you know that at the end we do a little thing for um, nonprofits or um, charities in the Vancouver area, because that's where we live. 
<laughs> Anyways, this week's is Hives for Humanity, and it is a nonprofit based in the downtown east side of Vancouver, um, and it helps create opportunities for people who are at risk. Um, it gives them uh, the ability to like connect with, with people and um, learn skills like beekeeping. It's literally like hives for humanity it's beehives that we're talking about (laughs) not like um you get an allergic reaction and you get hives (laughs) and you start scratching all over yourself um they don't have a website here and or they do i'm just it's very small hivesforhumanity.com um if you want to donate or buy some honey that would be cool all of their honey is raw unpasteurized and lightly filtered so nice Get some local honey or some local um, to Vancouver honey. Yeah, so support the bees and um, our at-risk people in the downtown east side. Hivesforhumanities.com Cool. Save the bees, everybody. (laughs) All right. Thanks for listening, guys. As always, uh, we really appreciate it. We love you. You all matter. Don't be insecure. Don't be insecure. Or if you are, that's okay. If you are, just don't let it get you like yeah. down you know don't don't let anyone make you feel insecure either yeah exactly. everyone has value that's something that's really important to me and to us yeah everyone has value respect everybody respect everybody anyways thanks for listening guys bye bye <laughs> <laughs>